Janice Ray, Sickle Finn Red Horse. From the lower reaches of Burning Town, from Iotla and Forney, deep and hanging dog, they are a school of red horses galloping up the mountain streams. For thousands of years they have plunged upward toward the future, and still they push against swift waters, centuries eroding behind, loss crashing and breaking over. I will not stand in sorrow as long as they need me to stand. I will climb onto the bridge at Reliance and watch them as they pass. Taste of dried fish bones like granite flakes, Junigitla, silt in the mouth, Red feathers dancing, horse beneath me, pot of heavy bones. I'm carried away. Yes, my brother too is dead. Yes, when we gather before a fire, our house is divided, eroded, small. Is there a list where I can write my feast of casualties? as we chase the ages into a stone weir and gather them. My baskets are heavy with stones, and the rock is coppery, brassy. It glints and leaps, tails flying. The rock fills my eyes, mouth, belly, and yet they come tumbling through rushing waters, smoothing the edges of time out of the Tuckasegee, the Hiawassee, and the Oconalufti, a herd of stones spilling into the deep pools of their breeding. So many the red feathers make the rivers burn, fire water, boiling stew. I see the floating lilies of their eggs, diaphanous veils, and miss the sacred female, stallions waiting with the gift of seed. Because the first responsibility of the son and the daughter is to return. I see the ancestors coming down with their baskets, the girls laughing on the silver wet boulders, the young boys thigh deep in the rushing cold waters, wrestling the wild red horses the way boys will do, corrals full of stones, streams of tears. Years eroding from the old mountains, their words filling my ears. Amaganugov, Sokwili, Anindvya. I see my brother fishing from the thickets of rhododendron. I see my grandmother next to him. I see my uncles, my aunts, my father's cousins fishing for stone beside baskets of silt and dust as the world crumbles to pieces. Junigitla, 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 thundering up the Nantahala, up Keener, from the impoundment at Fontana, from the dam at Chiloe, at Cagley, at Hensley Lake, from below Silva, now that Dillsboro is down. I see them leaping the dam at Ella. The old people are laughing, white threads of fires rising behind them. Town feast, feast of love, feast of stone. Soon the dancing will begin. Hi, I had never heard of a sickle fin red horse when I uh, first got the opportunity to write about them. I was so surprised to find that it was one of the most common fish that Native Americans uh, had eaten, you know, catching them in these great stone weirs in the mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee, and also a small portion of northern Georgia. So it seemed so odd that something that had been so important to to uh, ancestral people and and a part of a food supply for a very long time would have been so little studied and little known by um, us these days.
my ancestors are Celtic, and a poet I really love is a Gaelic poet named Sorley MacLean. If if you study Sorley, especially a poem called Halleig, H A L L A I G, which is about the clearances in Scotland, you'll see some similarities between the way that Maclean approaches grief and the way that I'm approaching it in this poem. He especially uses a lot of place names and place being so important to my work and to my psyche. I'm doing the same thing here, just gathering these, the names of these places where this, you know, very endangered fish once swam and lived and bred and fed people. And I, I think that calling up sort of of ghosts from the past, which is what's happening this in this poem, the ghosts of my own family, the ghosts of places, is, is sort of the stream and the spirit that's running beneath this. Being unable to actually address the grief straight on, you'll see that I use a lot of repetition. So first of all, I'm, you know, I'm standing on a bridge imagining that these fish have returned in great numbers and are climbing back up these streams to, to their breeding holes. And yet what I'm really seeing are rocks, you know, pools uh, of stone. And, and so it's this bittersweet kind of taste of granite flakes when I look down and, and no longer see these very special fish. Also, I think it's important to say that I love horses. I, I have horses. And I, I loved the fact that this horse, I mean, that this fish, because of its uh, coloring, is called a red horse. So I, I just had a wonderful time working with that imagery. You know, the color red, one of, one of my favorite colors to work with, and then this iconic animal, the horse. There's a lot going on in this poem. There's a lot going on in this book. There's a lot that we have to say about our Feast of Casualties, which it's, it's a shout out to the poet Stanley Kunitz, whose phrase I think was Feast of Losses. I thank him for that. We've lost so many native languages, the same as we've lost so many native species. Like the ghosts of our past, the people we've known, the people who once walked the earth and now live underground. I wanted to call those back. So I thank you again for reading this and thinking about it and maybe falling in love with your place and the creatures of your place, whatever they are, past, present, and may it be future. Thank you. If you're interested in reading more of my work, I invite you to look at my first book, Ecology of a Cracker Childhood, which is about growing up on a junkyard amid a globally imperiled ecosystem, the longleaf pine, or The Seed Underground, A Growing Revolution to Save Food, which is a look at vintage heirloom varieties of fruits and vegetables, and that the people who are keeping those seeds and those genetic resources alive in gardens all over this country. Events and other information can be found at my website, which is www.janiseray.com, J-A-N-I-S-S-E-R-A-Y.com. And I invite you to please like my author page on Facebook or follow me on Instagram.